Hi everyone, I'm Ismail, and welcome to Introduction to Project Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation course. I'm super excited to be your course lead, and I'm very glad to be sharing with you my over 10 years experience in this field. In this course, you will learn the processes and concepts of project planning. Why should you plan your project appropriately? And how can you plan your projects in a cost-effective and adaptive manner? You will also learn about monitoring and evaluation and criteria for evaluation. You will familiarize yourself with monitoring and evaluation practical questions and learn how to develop your own MIA questions for your various projects in different contexts. Let's start with planning. According to the United Nations, planning is the first stage of project management. It is a critical management function that aims at balancing the difference between the need and the available resources. For every project, there's usually a need or a gap that the project, that the project has come to address. So balancing the need, the, the distance between this need and the limited available resources in terms of human resources and financial resources is what we call planning. It is a continuous thinking process that, enab that enables you to estimate and forecast the future, what the successes of your project will look like even before you start implementing your projects. It is the basis of implementation of processes that direct all activities in the proper sequential manner. So when you plan your projects very well, it gives you opportunity to know which activities should be implemented before another activities, or what are the group of activities that could be implemented simultaneously. Why should you plan your project in the first place? So it clarifies what should be done. How should it be done? Why should it be done? And then when will you implement those activities? Who will be in, responsible for the implementation of the activities? And with whom, with that person that is responsible or group of people that are responsible to implement the activities uh, work with? You might be thinking of partnering with some organization to deliver your results. So during the process of planning your projects, you will have optimized what should be done, when should it be done, how will you implement those activities and with whom, and who will take lead. It enables you to align your project objectives with expected results. It also improves your focus on priorities so that you maximize the limited resources that you have for your project. It also helps you to reduce risk and uh, forecast the successes of your project even before you start implementation phase. So you have an idea of what the success will look like before you uh, begin your implementation. Now that we have talked about project planning, and we have discussed why you should plan your projects in, the, in an ad adaptive manner. So what are the questions that comes to mind is how do I plan my projects? So I call these five key steps of project planning, I call them best practices, because they have been tested across various projects in different sectors, agricultural sector, health sector, and education sector. And they are proved to be uh, best practices for, implement, for planning your projects. So the first thing is to identify and come up with a strategy to actively engage your stakeholders. So you need to come up with a strategy that will enable you to actively engage your stakeholders. First of all is who are your stakeholders? What are their interests or what are their stake in that project? How do you analyze these stakeholders? So we have questions to these, we have answers to these questions in a separate module when you are going to be having opportunity to listen to me again and uh, address all the challenges that you might be facing or how the questions that you might have in mind as regards how do I actively engage my stakeholders. Secondly, you need to define your program goal and impact with specific objectives and, and expected results to be achieved. Thirdly, you need to develop framework. Here we call it MIE framework and define your key performance indicators as well as your baseline, and they set realistic, realistic targets. Again, we have another separate module for these third steps that discuss um, how do you use logical framework and resource framework to plan your project? How do you develop smart indicators, for example? And how do you define your baseline and set realistic targets? The next steps in planning your project is outline your key activities implementation with respect to the timelines of the project. Now, over the years, 
of uh, my experience of MIE in this sector, I've realized that many development organizations and uh, many projects have been come up, coming up with five years robust work plan for a five years project just to respond to the need of the uh, donor organization. That is very good. But I would advise that, can you take two steps backward to divide, to, to break down this five years robust work plan for your five years project into annual work plans? And again, divide that along annual work plans into a quarterly work plan. So this will serve two purposes. It will help you to better understand your project, the activities that you want to implement. And again, it will also help you to better track these activities using M and E lens so that you can measure your progress towards your target sets more easily. Finally, budgeting. So this is determining and distributing resources. More importantly, uh, the financial resources available for the projects so that you have a budget for the timeline of the activities. Although uh, I will always advise that this should be developed in a flexible manner so that you can accommodate emergence as you begin to uh, implement your, acti your activities during the implementation phase. So what is monitoring all about? According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, monitoring is a continuing function that collects data on specific indicator to provide stakeholders of an ongoing development and on, uh, on extents at which the progress is being made or achievements are being recorded against the objectives of the project and use of allocated resources. So in this definition, there are key terminologies that I would love you to, I would love to expand on, or keywords. First of all is that monitoring is a continuous function. So it's an ongoing activity, starting from the beginning of the project to the end of the project. And uh, it's, it, it aims at collect data on specified indicators that provide stakeholders of an ongoing development. So it helps to track your progress towards the set uh, target. And also, it provides information on the extent of progress and achievements uh, being made. And finally, uh, it's also used to track your budget. Again, another lesson learned over, the, over my years of M&A experience is that many organizations focus so much on results, on result monitoring. They monitor the output, the outcome, they focus so much on monitoring the milestones, outputs and outcomes, and even the activities and inputs. But they pay less attention on the budget monitoring. So to what extent are we executing the available budgets? for the key activities that we are delivering. We should not forget that at the end of the day, there should be an evaluation when we are going to be judged based on the results being achieved, achieved and how well we have maximized available financial resources and human resources to deliver those results. So paying attention on both results monitoring and budget monitoring uh, is extremely important. Let's consider a couple of examples of monitoring. Counting number of project beneficiaries who are female. This is monitoring against the key performance indicators of number of beneficiaries who are female. So this will provide information on not only the number of beneficiaries for the project, but also uh, provide information on gender sensitivity of the project in terms of what is the percentage of female beneficiaries. Also, measuring hectares of land cultivated by supported farmers. This is another monitoring uh, example. Recording the number of jobs created for young Africans. Likewise, measuring change in income of vulnerable peoples and observing change in educational system. We've talked about monitoring. Now let's consider a couple of examples of monitoring questions. You might want to know, as an him and he, officer for a project or as a project manager, you might want to ask yourself a couple of questions. Are tasks being carried out as planned? Are we on track? So that you better strategize on how to improve your delivery. Again, another practical MIA monitoring questions could be, are there any unforeseen circumstances that arise? It is a different, this is a different ball game when you are implementing your project. As, as, as against when the project is being planned. So during implementation, a lot of reality comes in. So it gives you an opportunity to re-strategize and, and incorporate 
the missing gaps. Then how are your team performing at a given period of time? It's another monitoring questions so that you can compare your delivery rates on a quarterly basis, for example, or on an, on an annual basis. Then another one could be, uh, another one is, will activities lead you to expected results? So this key question, this monitoring questions help us to generate information as regards, do we have available, uh, are, the, are the activities available, are they sufficient to generate the expected results that we have promised? So what, are we, do we need to incorporate some new activities along the line based on the realities? Or, see, or do we need to better implement or better improve the strategy for implementation of the already agreed upon set of activities? What are the elements of the project that needs changing? And so on like that. Let's look at evaluation. Evaluation is a systemic a systematic and objective assessment of ongoing or completed project. So it could be an assessment of an ongoing project or a completed project. Here we seem to uh, judge the design of the project. We also looked at the implementation plan of the project. Not only that, we also judge based on the results accomplished by the, by the project and the budget executed. It is a periodic assessment of the relevance of the project, the effectiveness of the project, the efficiency of the project, uh, the impact of the project, and also the sustainability of such project. Can the project stand the test of time? I will emphasize uh, more on this in, my in the next few seconds. Evaluation is also an independent uh, examination with a view in drawing conclusion or drawing lessons that will help to guide decision making for improvement of future activities or future projects. Now that we have talked about evaluation, what are the criteria for evaluation? So there are six main criteria for evaluation. Coherence. Coherence is how well the project is aligned to the country plan or to the national plan of the country. Is the project addressing the key challenge that has been uh, identified in the, in, the, in, the, in the national plan, in the country national plan, if the project is being implemented uh, nationwide? Or has it been, uh, uh, is it addressing the key challenge that has been identified within a particular community, if it's a community-based project? And that answers the question of relevance. Is the project relevance to the immediate need of the community. Effectiveness is the intervention achieving its objectives. And efficiency, how well are resources being used? Now we are talking, when we talk about resources here, we are talking about the human resources, the timeline of the project, as well as the cost, more importantly, the available budgets or financial resources. And the impact is what difference is the intervention or your project making? Is the project making uh, a difference at all? Is it worthwhile? And sustainability, will the project stand the test of time? The results that the project has delivered, will, that, will those results be sustained, even at, beyond the end of the project? Let's look at some practical evaluation questions as they relate to the criteria for evaluation. I take this one after the other. Relevance, was the project a good idea, given the resources, given the situation? Did this deal with target group's priorities. Efficiency, were resources used in the best possible ways? What, alternative were, what alternatives were available in resource allocation? Were there alternative ways that would have implemented the project to achieve similar results at the same quality level with, uh, with minimal resources? Or is it possible for us to have achieved that same result at the same quality level but use less uh, resources. To what extent were resource and objectives achieved? Effectiveness and impact. To what extent has the project contributed towards long-term goal or objective of the project? Sustainability, would the change remain after the project? This is another key evaluation criteria that an uh, evaluation body comes to check out for. 
So they use it a lot to judge uh, achievement of a project. That after the project, would the results that the project has delivered still remains? So that's why it is encouraged that every project has sustainability plan. And coherence, how well does the project fit into national development plan? Let's recap what we have learned today in this video. We have talked about the concepts and processes of planning your project in a cost-effective and adaptive manner. We've also talked about planning and monitoring as continuous processes that facilitate effectiveness and efficiency. We also learned about evaluation criteria as relevance, effectiveness, efficiency, coherence, impact, and sustainability. We also learned that evaluation is not only to judge, but also to draw lessons and guide future decision making. Congratulations, you have come to the end of this module.